Hey everyone, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. Good morning to you. How's everything going? It's fine over here. The birds are chirping, the sun is shining, and Tim Jones Jr. is giving us cringe. You already know from the title today that we are talking about the pastor's testimony. And please hold. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to say about it. Well, obviously I do. I want to make a video. Um, the cringe was so hard in this and the cringiest part of his testimony, which you probably already know what I'm going to be talking about, we will get to at the very end. Um, and, and this is going to be short. Hopefully I say that and then it's a 20 minute video. Um, I just want to go over a few little key points because I thought that it was very interesting testimony to create kind of like the mindset that we see because some of the stuff he was describing that he saw in Tim, I think that we kind of see, and so it's interesting because this was years prior that he was dealing with Tim and Amber, <coughs> pardon me, and so I think it's interesting to kind of do this little correlation or whatever. Anyways, that being said, let's start analyzing. So uh, this is Pastor Micro, My, Micah Sutton, and uh, at the time, I think it sounded like he was a different uh, denomination or, or whatever you call it, uh, he went by a different faith. Uh, when he was dealing with Tim. And it was like a Pentecostal uh, belief, I believe it was. I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not versed in a lot of religious stuff, so pardon me if I'm butchering this. Um, but I just want to kind of go over a little thing, a few things right here. I made a list that he brought up on the witness stand that I felt like were of interest. So he was saying that him and his wife kind of talked, and they basically almost made light of the fact that uh, Tim was able to upset the entire congregation you know of like 25 people or whatever like he could like tick people off and i forget how he said it uh but he he was the only person that could tick all 25 people off and basically the the overall before we even go to that i guess i should say the overall thing and theme with tim is that he was an extremist he was very literal with the scripture like very literal and because of that it you know he would get into disagreements with people and whatnot um, and so we'll get into the, the literal scripture reading in, in a little bit. Um, so we're going to just kind of go over things with that in the frame of mind. Uh, this is also interesting. He said that it seems like he's taking the Bible and using it to explain the world around him of the things that he can't understand. And so he's almost like using it as this filter. But if you stop and kind of stand back from that and say, okay, so he's using the Bible that he's taking completely literal and trying to explain what he doesn't understand. Well, we don't know what he doesn't understand. You know, I mean, this could be simplistic things that other people naturally get, but he's like, oh, whoa, that scares me. So let's apply this, you know, literal, you know, very conservative, very extremist uh, of you to it and not budge from it. Uh, clearly, you're going to run into issues with that. Um, and also he said, you know, somebody had an opinion or a thought or something, you know, Tim would recite scripture and he did say that he was very good at reciting, like maybe memorization or whatever, but the, it, almost the way I took it is that he lacked anything super, it was all superficial. Basically there was no depth to that. So it's like, well, yeah, you can sit here and recite scripture and be able to quote this and quote that. But if you don't really know the true meaning behind it, or you're doing it, you are using it as maybe like a weapon, I guess, instead of a, a tool of help, it falls on deaf ears. And so, um, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so let's see, he had the ability to quote the Bible, but lacked any ability to be able to help others or help them move towards Christ. And so that right there, I mean, it's kind of what I was just re restating or whatever. Um, I mean, that's very interesting. So he can sit here because I've actually, I grew up in a very religious area. Um, you could call it the Bible Belt, but not 100%. Um, but we had, you know, the Bible Belt was there, but it wasn't as Bible Belty as other places. Um, and I can remember being in grade school and looking back now. And like, I can remember this one person I'm thinking of who, who would recite passages from the Bible. And I mean, I think that's cool if you can do that. Um, you know, and you know it like that, especially at a young age, it's like, well, wow, like they're really, you know, uh, astute in their studies or whatever. Um, but 
it was almost like they didn't know. I mean, looking back now, I know it's like, well, they didn't know what they were talking about. They just knew, you know, they were just reciting these things and just kind of like mouthing off with it. And it really had no substance. And so it just reminded me of this when I was listening to him because I was like, yeah, I remember that guy in high school that would do that all the time. And it was just, it didn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't really, we didn't pay attention to it because of whatever, you know, but getting older, you're, I just always have thought about him. And so that reminded me of this. Hopefully he hasn't killed his family, but we'll see. Um, so I just thought that was interesting for him to say. Uh, and also this, when Tim wanted to learn, he was a great student. But when he made his mind up, it was near impossible to break through that. So, and a lot of people can be that way. You know, like, I mean, especially I think the older we get, the more, because as older we get, it's like we know ourselves, we know our world, we know our experiences and our relationship and feelings towards those experiences better. And so some things that I might've put up with when I was 20 years ago, 20 years younger, well, now I know right, wrong, or indifferent. You know what? I don't want that in my orbit. Um, and so I'm not going to have that in my orbit. Um, but if you're not willing to have a, uh, a, to be able to analyze that from an outward perspective, it's one thing to say, you know what, I know this isn't right, but I don't want, I don't like that. So no, or, you know what, I know there's another opinion, but this is me, you know, I've done this for this long. I just want to do it. I don't care that type thing. So, I mean, now we got to remember Tim was pretty young when this was, I mean, not young, young, but you know, wasn't a kid, but you know, he was much younger than we see him now. Um, so he was much younger there. And so already that kind of like that determination and you heard Amber talking about that, like when he wanted something or whatever, attain it, he would. And so I think that that works in both ways. I think that can be good, but it can also be very bad. And especially if it comes to a belief system, because if you're forming these beliefs, you know, if we form a belief and we're not willing to come off of that, even with other information or experiences to say, oh, well, wait, you know, I believe this at once, but maybe these experiences have changed that or this knowledge. You know what I'm saying? That could be a, a slippery slope. Uh, and I'm not trying to sit here and say that. I mean, I've done that before, too. I get it. Uh, but it's just that that ability to to bend. It doesn't sound like he had that at all. Um, he did make mention of this monster inside him. So that's very interesting that he brought that up. Um, because, I mean, Tim has said that, too, before of this thing inside of him. Um, and we hear this again too with like Bundy and these people, they talk about this thing inside of them, um, which I just find, you know, kind of scary and kind of interesting. So now when they asked towards the end, what they asked the pastor, uh, and how did I write it when they asked the pastor of Tim, did Tim understand thou shall not kill? Amazing question. Amazing question. And the pastor said, yes, done. I mean, they are really covering everything up there. I mean, they, because, you know, they, he was up there saying that we talked in tongues, we did this, you know, and I can get why they're bringing the pastor up there because, I mean, obviously he's like, well, yeah, he knew morally right from wrong. He knew that. I mean, and you didn't have to, I already knew he knew that. Um, but it was just very interesting. So, you know, the big th factors that I took away from the pastor's testimony was that he was, you know, very literal, very conservative, very rigid with his belief, um, to the point that even amongst other extremists, they were like, wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, he takes it to another level. And basically, it was almost like a crutch. It was almost like, you know, I don't get that. It's weird. It's different. Burn it with fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, type of belief. And so, to me, if you're looking at, and this is what comes to mind, and I'm going to use this as an example. It might be a bad example because I'm not trying to knock this at all because I find it very fascinating. But if you've ever watched some of those ancient alien shows, like I can remember watching one where they're looking at it through the lens of literal interpretation of the Bible. And they're like, you know, okay, there's a chariot in the sky. So what does this mean if they're literally describing what they see? You know, well, when you read that, it's like, yeah, I mean, this sounds like, you know, space aliens are visiting, you know, we're doing all this crazy stuff. And so... And again, I'm not trying to knock space aliens, stuff like that. I mean, that's a whole other topic we can get into because I'm fascinated with it. But it, it comes to mind where I'm just like, okay, and again, I don't know what Bible they're reading or whatever. But, you know, I mean, there's some stuff in the Bible that I'm just like, ooh, I don't know if I want to literally interpret that. That could be kind of scary. You know what I'm saying? But it sounds like he did. And so I just think it's interesting that even amongst, you know, probably people that on the spectrum could be considered pretty extreme or conservative or whatever, that they were just like, wow, you know. 
and he had the ability to get under everybody's you know feathers around them and doing the stuff like calling the pastor at two in the morning to ask like you know what did this mean i mean just like obsessive about it but it also to me brings up this whole level of he's using it as his crutch to explain things that he doesn't understand we already said that a million times paul but also it's like <clears throat> excuse me it, it's almost like this tool to be better than holier than thou uh, he's using it as that i might not know the world but i think i know this book and that makes me better than it, that's what i'm seeing here and so that being said let's get to the juiciest part of this when the pastor said that Tim left the church, part of the reason he was leaving, because he wanted the role of, the, of, you know, leadership role, which, I mean, the pastor was being nice, but he was like, oh, hell no. You know, <laughs> absolutely not. The congregation will leave. But then when he claimed that the pastor's wife was trying to seduce him, I mean, I can't even say it. I mean, the pastor, that that poor man, that pastor was being, you know, he laughed out. Like, he snorted over that in real life. I mean, y'all, the cringe was so bad. I was like this. Like, am I watching this? I was so embarrassed for Tim. And then they pan over to Tim. <laughs> they pan over to Tim. And he, just, you know. He just that catatonic look on his face. You know, he's sitting over there like, yeah, she wanted me. Yeah, she wanted me. You know, I'm just like, I'm like, who? that right there, when they finished up that, I was like, done. I mean, that's all you need to know about this person. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you know how I tell you, like, people will tell you everything you need to know between their sentences and stuff like that. This is a prime example. Here is somebody quoting this Bible up one side, down the other. Did that. When he doesn't start to get his way, well, your wife wants me. Your wife thinks I'm hot. She's wearing, you know, little trashy clothing. And, you know, and the pastor's giving these examples where he's being nice. But he's like, my wife doesn't, like, notice anything. Now, and who knows? Maybe she liked him. I don't know, you know. But the fact that you would go to the pastor and tell him that, I mean, just crawl under the table and don't show your face for three weeks. I mean, oh, my gosh. You know, of course, so the pastor's like, you know, this is completely out of my wife's character. Uh, you know, this is just absolutely abnormal. Um, so the whole thing, I mean, I was just like, I cannot believe what I'm watching. I cannot believe what I'm watching. But just so arrogant. So arrogant. You know, and just, again, into that whole thing. I can't get the leadership role, and I'm not getting my way. And so I'm going to, again, in a way, lash out. Yeah, I mean, and of all things, I mean, thank God he didn't kill him. Um, but, you know, the the pastor's wife, your wife is trying to seduce me, so I have to leave the church. Okay, Tim. Yeah, bye. Bye bye Yeah, I'm sure that's what he was thinking, like, okay, goodbye. Because, I mean, he was, like, talking, I mean, just, like, this guy was basically coming off creepy, you know. I mean, and anyone who does that, but I, I can't imagine the pastor. I mean, I bet they, they, they laughed so hard over that in a nice way. Um, anyways, so, y'all, let me know what you think about this testimony. I mean, I can't even, I can't even. Bailey's up in arms over it, y'all. Look, I mean, she doesn't even know what to do. She's like, I can't believe it either. So, I think I'm going to title this video The Pastor's Wife, because why not? Um, so, anyways, I hope y'all are doing well. I love you, and we will talk soon. Say bye, Bailey.